we, we're in a series called Freedom, and I'm going to try my very best to catch everybody up on what, what this has been all about, okay? I'm going to try my best in an abbreviated short of time. So, uh, you know, be patient with me. I'm going to try my best. Paul is a, a missionary and a church planter, right? And he started a church, or he helped start a church in a region in a city called Galatia. So he started a church there. He loves the people in Galatia. All right, it's kind of like, you know, we're, we're starting Swerve Church in Bushwick, right? But he started a church in Galatia. And he was a part of that. He, he had a great relationship with the people there. He started it by preaching the truth of, of Jesus, of the gospel, that we are saved uh, by faith through grace in Christ alone. And that's, that was the message that was founded upon, that it wasn't by any religious acts. It wasn't by keeping the letter of the law. It was only by Jesus. And they started the church. But then Paul had to go on because he kept starting churches all over the place. So he had to move. And plus he got locked up and all that stuff. So he got, he left the region of Galatia. And after he left, some false teachers came into the city and began teaching a, a different truth. They, basically what they said was, all that Jesus stuff that, that Paul taught you is amazing. It's good. But you also have to keep some rules that we see in the Old Testament. In particular, they were hinged on uh, the, uh, the commandment of circumcision. So, la ladies, you probably would have been okay. Fellas, it would have been bad for us, right? If you're like, you know, la la later on in your life, and then somebody says, hey, if you want to go into heaven, you got to get circumcised. It would have been bad for the guys, right? That that's, would have been a painful day for us, right? So, Paul hears that they're teaching that, and he says, hold on, that's, that's not true. So he writes this letter to his friends in Galatia to correct this false teaching. You guys with me? That's the whole premise of the book, of the letter. So we're in Galatians chapter 5. We're going to start at verse 7 and 8. And here's what it says. Look what Paul writes. Yep, chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. All right, it starts off by saying, you were running well. You see that? All right, here's what it says. Remember, this is Paul writing to the church in Galatia. You were running well. Who prevented you from being persuaded regarding the truth? This persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. All right, so here's what Paul is saying, right? He's saying, guys, when I left you, like it was Gucci, like it was all good, right? Like you guys were serving Jesus. You guys were reading the Bible. You knew the truth. The church was founded upon the gospel. You were running well. What happened? Why aren't you guys running well anymore? Well, they were blindsided by this false teaching. And he says that this persuasion, it doesn't come from God. Now, I asked myself the question, if that persuasion doesn't come from God, then who did it come from? It came from the false teachers, but who influenced those false teachers? What we got to understand is that we have a spiritual enemy who loves to tell us lies. The Bible calls him the father of lies. And so ultimately, what they were teaching, the Galatians, the false teaching was demonic. And what Paul is saying is that, man, that, that doesn't come from the one who called you. Who called you? Jesus called you. God called you into relationship with him. And what these guys are teaching you doesn't come from him. And he says, you were running well. You can almost hear like a little bit of disappointment in Paul. You were doing so good. Can I ask you guys a question? What has prevented you from running well? What has prevented you from running well? Perhaps you were once on fire for God. And you were seeking God with all your heart, soul, and strength. You were in a passionate pursuit of Jesus. Every day you would wake up with a worshipful attitude. You know, maybe you had a daily rhythm of reading your Bible on the regular. You would spend time in prayer, looking for God. You were running well. You were drawing close to God. And you felt like you were in a relationship and walk with Christ. What has kept you from running well? What has kept you from that red-hot pursuit of Jesus? Now, perhaps you were blindsided by some circumstances in, uh, in your life. Maybe you were blindsided by some problems. For the Galatians, they were blindsided by this false teaching. For you, maybe you were blindsided by uh, an issue, a diagnosis, a hardship. Maybe it was a, a, a breakup in a relationship. Or maybe 
Uh, you guys have heard of this thing called COVID? Anybody heard of that? Maybe COVID, maybe quarantine, maybe fear, and sickness, and being surrounded by bad news all the time. Maybe you were blindsided by that. And maybe seven months ago before this whole pandemic deal, you were in a red hot pursuit of Jesus and you were in love with Jesus and you were reading your Bible and you were hungry for community. But then you were blindsided. What has prevented you from running well? Do you recognize that that persuasion doesn't come from God? It doesn't come from God. What is God's heart for you? What is God's desire for you? God wants to be in relationship with you. He wants you to be close to him and he wants to be close to you. Whatever has prevented you from running well, that doesn't come from God. He goes on to say, Galatians chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. A little leaven leavens the whole batch of dough. I myself am persuaded in the Lord that you will not accept any other view. But whoever it is that is confusing you will pay the penalty. You know, um, Melissa, was, uh, Melissa baked some donuts uh, a week and a half ago or something like that. She made it from scratch. Some, some of you guys saw that. Some of you guys saw that on Instagram. So she made it from scratch. So to make donuts, you got to make dough, right? So we, we didn't have like store-bought dough. We made, she, she made the dough from scratch. You put the flour, you put all the ingredients together. But then there's, there's something that comes in a little tiny packet like that. Do you guys know what that is? The yeast. And they come in tiny packets, right? When you, you can't get like a bag of yeast. You get like a little packet of it because you only need a little bit. That's right. You introduce a little bit and the yeast is like the secret ingredient to make the dough rise. You just put the littlest bit into the dough. You let it set and the dough doubles, right? It's like the yeast infects the dough. It spreads all over the dough and it makes it rise and it makes it great. This is what Paul is talking about. Paul is saying it takes a little bit of of yeast to make the dough rise. What is he saying? Let me give you guys another example. Uh, Pastor Craig Rochelle, he likes to use this, so I'm, you know, I'm stealing it from him. Uh, but let's say, you know, we got these danishes here, right? But let's say I baked uh, a batch of brownies for everybody, right? And it's like the most, it's not, it's not super dry, you know, I don't, I hate dry, and it's not super wet. You know, it's like right in between. It's moist, and it's fresh from the oven, and it's like you know, I got like nuts crumbled on top and it's so good. And I gave it to you and I gave everybody a piece. And you take that moist brownie, and you put it up to your mouth. And I say, hold on, hold on. Be before you eat it, I got to tell you, there's a secret ingredient in there. All right, before I bake the brownie, you know, there's all these people walking dogs all over the place. And, you know, one left a little surprise on the ground. So I just took a scoop, a little bit. I took a scoop of poop off the ground and I threw it in there. It's my secret ingredient to the brownie. And I, and I mixed it up, but I mixed it up real good though, okay? There's not like a chunk in there, I promise you. I mixed it up real good, I popped it in the oven. Go ahead, eat the brownie. Who's gonna eat that brownie? Anybody? <laughs> a little bit of poop messes up the whole brownie, right? A little bit of yeast infects the whole dough. And that's what Paul is saying here. Paul says that a little lie introduced to the truth infects the whole truth. So these, these guys that were teaching this to the church, they were saying, Jesus is great. That's true. Jesus is the way to heaven. That's true. Jesus died for your sins. That's true. But you also have to keep the law. That's false. But you also have to keep the old covenant. That's false. And a little bit of of a lie introduced to the truth infects the whole truth. It impacts the whole truth. You cannot entertain a little lie because it impacts. It will spread. Let me ask you guys another question today. Are there any areas in your spiritual life that you're believing a lie that may be leading you to your lack of running well? Is there a lie that's been introduced to your life that's keeping you from running well? You know, for some of us, it may be, you know, it seems like we're never going to make it out of this season. It seems like this is never going to end. It seems like we're going to be stuck in this forever. Have you believed that lie? For some of you, maybe you believe the lie that, you know, you're, you're, you're always going to be emotionally unhealthy. Spiritually, you're never going to get back to where you were. 
Have you believed that lie about yourself? That you're always going to struggle, that you're always going to have hardship, that you're always going to fail, that you're always going to be in want and lack. What about this lie? That God doesn't love you. Now, how can God love somebody like you after the past that you've lived or after the mistakes that you've made, after the, the things that you've gone through? There's no way that God could ever forgive you. Or maybe you've believed the lie that you're used goods, or that you're too broken, and that God can never love somebody like you. Some of you have, li- have allowed a little bit of yeast into the dough. And that lie can spread. And if we, we begin to believe that light will affect the truth and it will drown out the truth. Galatians 5.11 says this, Now, brothers and sisters, if I still preach circumcision, why am I still persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. Here's what Paul is saying. Essentially, he's saying that some people are accusing him of still preaching circumcision. And he's saying, if I was preaching that nonsense, then why are they persecuting me? Paul was always under constant persecution for preaching the gospel. And he says, if if I'm preaching that, then why why am I being persecuted? And he's being persecuted because uh, the key is there. He says that the cross of the the offense of the cross. You see, guys, the, uh, the the message of the cross is offensive. It's an offensive message. The message of the cross, the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ is offensive. And when you're pursuing the truth, when you're pursuing freedom in Christ, you must realize that some will be offended by your pursuit. People will be offended by your pursuit of Jesus, by your pursuit of of looking for Jesus Christ. Here's why it's offensive. At the core, the message of the gospel is offensive because it says that you are unable to save yourself. And everything within us wants to make amends with God by how we live our lives, by what we do. And at the core, the message of the gospel is offensive because we are incapable of saving ourselves. We're so independent as people. We're autonomous and we're downright prideful. And we are unable to see our need for help. And you know what? Even if we see our need for help, we're unwilling to ask for it because of our pride. But the gospel shows us that we are helpless to save ourselves. That there's nothing that you can do to bring salvation. That there's nothing that you can do to to grant you the forgiveness of sin. And the Bible says that we are sinful and we are incapable of saving ourselves. But what does God do? God doesn't leave us in our incapacitated state. God doesn't leave us in our helpless state. God, out of his immense love for you and for me, enters his creation in the person and work of Jesus. And the Bible says that our, the wages of sin is death. In other words, what we deserve is death for our sin. And Jesus says, you don't have to do that. I'm going to do it in your place. And Jesus lives the perfect life that you and I could not live. And then he dies in our place so that in his death we can experience forgiveness of sin. And then three days later, by the power of the Holy Spirit, God raises him from the grave. And in his life, we can experience newness of life. And in order to experience this salvation, this forgiveness of sin, this new life, this renewed purpose, all we need to do, the Bible says, is not fill the, you know, check off the religious checklist. It's not do actions, do more. It's only to put our faith in Jesus Christ. And that's offensive because you cannot save yourself. It is impossible to save yourselves. I'm going to finish with this, Galatians 5, verse 12. He says this, check this out. I wish those who are disturbing you might also let themselves be mutilated. All right, let's pray. (laughs) Let's finish with that verse right there, right? What is he saying? Okay, circumcision has to do with cutting something away, right? And Paul here, it sounds crude uh, to begin with, but let me tell you, anybody who has kids here knows if somebody messes with your kids, what will happen? All right, those of you that don't have kids, you got pets. If somebody touches your pet, what's going to happen? Right? Right? All of a sudden, like, we, we become defensive, right? We, we speak up for our kids. And this is what Paul is saying. Paul, out of fatherly love, he's, he's, he's stepping in to protect his uh, spiritual children, the church in Galatia. And what he's saying, in essence, is that that cutting away that they're talking about, that, that circumcision, he says, I wish they would be mutilated. And what he's saying, in other words, he's like, I wish they would be cut off. I wish that they would be cut away. I wish those liars would be cut off. 
And the takeaway for us is, what are the things in our lives that are keeping us from pursuing Jesus that we need to cut away? What are the things in your life that's keeping you from a red-hot pursuit of Jesus that you need to cut off? For some of us, uh, you know, for example, some of us is those deceitful voices. You'll never amount to nothing. You're never going to get out of this pandemic. You're never going to get back to, you know, being emotionally healthy, spiritually healthy. You're used goods. You're good for nothing. God can never forgive somebody like you. You need to cut off those deceitful voices. You need to get rid of those deceitful voices. For some of us, we need to get rid of distractions. It's the distractions that are keeping us from pursuing Jesus. You know, for the past seven months since we've been quarantined, some of you guys just, you know, finished. Net- you saw all of Netflix, but don't have time to read the Bible. Don't have time to look for community. Don't have time to pray. But you saw every single last movie and show on Netflix. Those are distractions that we need to cut away so that we can pursue Jesus. What about your circumstances? What if it's the situations that you're dealing with, that you're struggling with, and that's what's keeping you away? Can you cut off your circumstances? You can't cut that away, but you know what you can change? You can change your outlook. You can change your attitude. You can change your response about the circumstances that you find yourself in. What things in your life do you need to cut away that's keeping you from pursuing Jesus? There are things that will prevent us from running well. Some of us, before this whole pandemic, you were running well. But since this everything hit, since all this stuff mounted upon us, the pressure of everything's going on, the fear, we've stopped running well. There are things that will prevent us from running well, persuade us from, persuade us from the truth. But I want to encourage you. Encourage you to pursue the truth. Pursue freedom in Christ. Because the truth is worth pursuing. And the truth is worth living for no matter what you're going through right now. And I want to encourage you. What has kept you from running well? I want to encourage you to pursue the truth. Pursue freedom in Christ because it's worth pursuing. Hunter's going to lead us in uh, one final song and maybe you can spend some time and just pr- and pray and reflect. You know, think about, think about, you know, where were you seven months ago in your spiritual life and your walk with Christ? And where are you now? And then maybe ask the Holy Spirit to bring to mind, what do I got to cut away? What what do I got to cut away? What noise do I got to drown out so that I can be in red-hot pursuit of Jesus? Let's pray. God, I pray, Lord, that you might help us run well, that we may honor you in our walk because you desire relationship, not, not simply religion and not just, you know, word of mouth and not just a list of do's and don'ts. You want relationship. Lord, I pray that you would help us identify those things that are keeping us from pursuing the truth. God, the cross is offensive because at the core message of the cross is that we are incapable of saving ourselves. But I pray, God, that we would be humble and accept your gift of grace. Help us cut away everything that is keeping you from Jesus, that's keeping us from you, Lord, that we might be in red-hot pursuit of you, Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.